everybody. Thanks for tuning in to Border City Rock Talk. You get great news, great interviews, great interviewees, and sometimes a comedic touch. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, and comment below. Before further ado, I bring to you Doug Aldridge. How are you doing, Doug? Good, Ernest. It's good to see you, man. Thanks. Uh, I don't know if uh, Kat told you, um, the last time I interviewed you was the first time I interviewed you a couple years ago, and then I asked if you could send a guitar lick, and you sent me a shred. You're on the road. Um, that was okay, but I, you know what has happened? I lost <laughs> the friggin' interview on my laptop. So, oh, no. Yeah, so this is a pleasure to have you uh, back on the show. So well, you're in thanks, L.A. right now. For having me. Absolutely. Yep. You're in L.A. right now, getting ready to go out with uh, the Daisies uh, on the 6th, and actually you're going to be across the country in New York. But um, yesterday was Ronnie's uh, 14th anniversary of his passing, and you're at the memorial. Tell us about... Uh, um people that you met up with and uh, the vibe that you got yesterday well it's uh so it's amazing how the time has flown by i can't believe it's been 14 years since he passed that's crazy and and i have to be honest i have not i have not visited him since the funeral so i was one of the paul bearers paul bearers and um it's just, you know, life intercedes. I got kids and I don't know, man, 14 years. It just blew me away when I, but Wendy uh, reached out and invited me to come this year and I happened to be in town and I had a blast. It was great. We, I met with Wendy and some of the band guys and a bunch of Ronnie's dear friends that always go every year. And, um, and then, you know, we caught up and, and of course, you know, seeing where, where Ronnie is resting um, is, it was beautiful. You know, it's a really beautiful um, place that Wendy has has for him. And so, and the doctor was there that, that was taking care of Ronnie. Um, talked about cancer research and getting checked and some things that they're hoping will come to fruition that will be helpful. But um, the best part was, you know, kind of reminiscing, telling stories. And since I hadn't been there, nobody has heard my stories. I had a couple of good ones. And but the the thing that hit me the most was I they called me up in the middle and I wasn't really I didn't know that I'd be speaking and I didn't have anything prepared so I was just thinking about Ronnie like he would just I know he would he would be like ah oh, for f sake do we really need to hear this right I mean just I mean do we really need to hear what Doug has to say I you know it would it would be because part of the the memorial is to go have lunch afterwards at an Indian restaurant, which was Ronnie's favorite meal. Okay. So I could just see, I could just see Ronnie being like, can't we just get to the restaurant? I mean, come <laughs> on, dude, what, you know? And, and I told Wendy, I go, right. And she's like, yep. But um, we had a blast, you know, telling stories and, and then going to lunch and it was amazing food, this restaurant that Wendy took us to. And um, my wife and I went together Um yeah, it was great. Saw Simon and Scott from the band. And um, a lot of people, you know, are out of town or on tour. I think Rudy's on was out of town. Um, Fred Goldie was not there, unfortunately. But yeah, it was good people and good good vibes for Ronnie. And and the, the theme of the thing was Wendy started off by saying, like, we just there's a lot of crazy crap going on in the world these days. We gotta just be kind to each other, be kind. And it did first i was like that's interesting that's different but ronnie was out of all the musicians rock star legends i mean the great the goat you know out of all the the people you might think are the goat he was probably the kindest that you'd ever want so that made sense wow yeah for sure so you you were mentioning that you had a couple Ronnie's stories um can you share one that you uh you maybe brought up yesterday uh well one of them was that, that and I didn't say anything about Kobe Bryant because I didn't want to bring that up but there's a few people that have influenced me in my life that make me part of you know who I feel like I want to be or I try to be and right. Ronnie working with Ronnie it was was like the top of the that was the top of the thing and I can say Kobe Bryant because Kobe would, he had this work ethic that was just so crazy and he didn't care what anybody said. He just did what he was going to do. Um, not everybody is a fan of Kobe Bryant, obviously, but I am. And I grew up 
by kind of a little bit older than, than he was. But I remember when he came to the NBA and how hard he worked and what he accomplished even after it, the Lakers broke up, him and Shaq. And, and he was fearless, you know, and Ronnie was fearless. That's the point I was going to make up. But I just said, I just talked about Ronnie being fearless because Ronnie had that same work ethic as Kobe. He would, he would work, the band would rehearse for six weeks, maybe. My first tour with him, we rehearsed for six weeks. And it was fun. I mean, how, how, how amazing it would have been to, for anybody to work with him every day for five or six hours a day and he would be the first one to show up at rehearsal and the last one to leave and he would sing the show twice full like a hundred percent he he wouldn't be you know run, dancing around the stage or anything but he would be like it was full on that he was doing it and by doing that and that work ethic i mean the guy was just his voice was bulletproof you know so um and other stories was like, you know, that Holy Diver Live that we filmed in London. Um, Wendy was saying that um, somebody wanted to do an interview with Ronnie before he went on. And we were late to get there because Ronnie's friend was driving us to the gig and he got lost in London and it was raining. And it was like, by the time we got there, Ronnie basically had time to put his clothes on and that was it. We went on stage. No sound check, no nothing. And so the guy was like, well, Wendy said, yeah, Ronnie's not feeling so good anyway. So it's like, you know, it's not a good day and he's late. And after the show, the, the interviewer said, why did you lie to me? Ronnie sounded amazing. He, was, he wasn't sick, mm -hmm. but he was sick. That's just how he was. You know, oh, he just, okay. he, this, would, he pushed through. This is when he was, uh, he knew he was sick, but the public didn't know? Well, no, it was, it was a, he had a cold. It wasn't, oh, okay. it wasn't the, the this was, yeah, this was, this was years before he got sick. Oh, okay. This was he, but he he was pushing through during that cancer stuff too, because mm -hmm. obviously they they found the cancer late, and somebody brought up to my attention yesterday that there was a time on in two thousand two that Ronnie complained that his stomach was hurting, and he said, "Ah, uh, you can't have Indian food before a show or something like that," mm -hmm. and and that's it came up because we were having Indian food, and but uh, he he had a lot of pain issues. I remember seeing him uh, with heaven and hell and he was like, Oh man, I don't feel so good, you know? And then two or two years later, three years later, whenever it was, when I was going to tour with him at the very last tour in 2009, he was complaining again. And we were about ready to leave for that tour. And he com was complaining. And we said, Ronnie, you should go to the doctor, man. It's like, this isn't normal. And you don't want to be, we thought maybe it was like an ulcer or something like yeah. that. And he went to the doctor and, and eventually, obviously, we found out that he had advanced stage four cancer. And he was yeah. basically gone in six months, you know, unfortunately. And, this, and then now it's been 14 years. But the guy was fearless. He was. And he, he loved it. He would, like in musical terms, it's like comparing a guy like Edward Van Halen or Stevie Ray Vaughan, you know, those two guys, especially Jeff Beck, those guys are all fearless. They, nothing, there's nothing bothers them. Nothing. They don't care. They are just going to deliver every time. Like Stevie Ray Vaughan, every time, every time there's no off night, you know, Yeah. same with Ronnie. So that was, but yeah, there was also funny stories about, you know, Ronnie would get upset with this or that. And, you know, he was one of those guys that would wear his heart on his sleeve. He'd tell you if he was pissed off about something. And then five minutes later, you'd, you'd be good as good as gold. You know, he'd, everything was sorted out. It was like, okay, got it. Cool. Let's go. Let's go get, let's go get some Indian. <laughs> so he was kind of like an in the moment person. Like, you know what I mean? He wasn't um, phony. It was like, if he was upset with something, he would let you know. And then right away, it's forgotten, right? There's no need to yeah, hold on to it's it, been right? Exactly. It's been dealt with. There's no games. There was no games with Ronnie. You know, there's a lot of times with people in your life, they're not being 100% honest. There's something bothering them. And it might manifest later into a disagreement, or it might be something that that, that person's just got to live with, but they're unhappy about something. Ronnie would just get it out. And that's a 
beautiful thing, man, because there was no jive, no, no BS. Yeah, the sooner you deal with it, the sooner you can uh, um, resolve it. So, yeah, that's perfect. And that's uh, thanks for the stories, Doug. Um, yeah. So we're here to talk about as well. Um, Daisies are going out on uh, the 6th, starting in New York. Um, yeah. I'm doing about 10 shows across the States. Um, Radiance is the last album, but Light em, Light em Up will be released in September. Um, I want to ask a couple odd questions now. In the in the respect yeah. of let's say Maiden, where you got Bruce Dickinson, does Dave uh, does uh, David fly all the shows? No, he okay. he David David's got um, his pilot's license and he's a really great pilot. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of there's a lot of um, regulations and stuff, and you okay. know he's got he's got pilots, and so when I say regulations, like if you if you have a beer or something the night before, then you shouldn't be flying the next day right. or whatever. Yeah. David's not a, he, he barely drinks, but he's just, he, he, all, it's not about drinking, but that's, that's an example, yeah. but he's, he's up late. We're playing a show by the time he gets to bed he, and he might have to wake up and do some business or he might get woken up by somebody calling him or something. And so he doesn't want to be stressed about that preparing for a flight. Cause he's got other stuff to do aside from yeah. playing guitar mm -hmm. and flying jets. He's got business as well to do, but, um, but he does fly. Sometimes he's like, he'll just decide, yeah, I'm going to fly. And, you know, so he won't, um, he'll go straight from the gig to bed. And, and there's also, that's the other thing too, is sometimes, um, you know, you just, there's two hours of prep before the, the, the flight. Yeah. And if you're flying at 6 PM, that's, not a problem you can play a gig and then go in at four o'clock and do do your pre uh pre-board all that yeah. stuff but we're we've got a gig at at uh, eight o'clock and so we've got to fly at noon so we can go to the hotel and get ready and then go to sound check and blah 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 so he flies yeah. sometimes to answer your question but he's he's um he's a really good pilot he's probably He's equally as qualified as um as the guys that he hires to also you know fly us, and we don't go on long hauls with him. It's all these short hauls because yeah his his aircraft is it's a really beautiful plane. It's not you want to have a band lugging a bunch of guitars on and all that stuff. You know what I mean? It's like mm -hmm. it's beautiful leather upholstery and it's just it feels like his home. You know so. We just go for short hauls and and not all the time. A lot of times we'll just meet him because it, it's it just works out better. But I, as far as his flying skills, there was a time, not last tour, it was in two thousand. It was in twenty two. We were playing in Athens, and we had um. And I remember Talking in Georgia or Greece. Big, Greece. Okay. Yeah, and and I remember that place because I know a guy that basically is in charge of the parking lot for the for the aircraft, the private aircraft, and he okay. gave us a really he gave us a killer spot. A lot of times, you, you they put you way far away, and you got to take a bus for you know sometimes up to a half an hour to get to the terminal. Wow. But this guy gave us he gave us a parking space right in front of the the, the door, and um and I don't think he charged for it. Maybe I don't know. That's what Maybe I David gave him but some it, comp tickets. No, I gave him <laughs> comp tickets, but um, okay. but what? But as far as when we were flying in, this is the whole point of my long story. That's okay, man. Was, um, we were flying in, and it was windy. It was really windy, and you fly in over the water, and the airport's just right there, and you can see the the water when it's windy. The waves, you can see the waves are it's like white tops everywhere, and the plane was going like this. I mean. And at the last minute, they changed runways to uh, from one, one, whatever it was, runway right. They changed it to runway left. And by that time, he's flying manually. So he's got to line up the plane and, and all this stuff. And there's all these gadgets you got to do. And I thought, of course, he's going to hand off to his pilot and sitting next to him, who's it's his, he, for the day he's hired to be a co-pilot. But obviously, he's a he's a pilot as well. Mm -hmm. And I was like. We're coming in, we're, and it's like 1,000, 500, 100, 40, 30, 20. And I'm thinking, when's he going to – and he's, he's going like this, and the plane's going like this. 
And this is a very expensive aircraft. And I'm thinking he's going to hand off to the guy because this is too like gnarly. This is crazy. And he, he powered through it, man. He landed that thing perfectly. It was a little, it was a little rough, but he nailed it as good as any, I mean, way better than I thought we would, even if the other guy took it. So he's, he's a very, he's been flying a long time. He used to fly stunt planes. So he's, he's got skills. Yeah, I'd interview John um, Krabby's back in the band, um, and he told me about that, and I'm like, wow. I mean, and then I did my investigation into um, the band and the name and all that. And speaking of the yeah. name, you ever uh, get people? Uh, are you, do people ever think, or anybody thought about the Deadheads as kind of a, a membership club? Uh, well, we have. I'm pretty sure it's come we up. Have, we have some clubs that have come up, but there there have been a couple of times where somehow people got confused with the, the grateful dead yeah they, they hear the word dead and they're like oh that must be the grateful dead oh yeah so but generally no we've kind of been around long enough now where people kind of either they're friends or fans of the band or or they've heard it you know yeah um i want to ask you a couple um outside the scope questions okay so when was the last time you were recognized as doug aldrich you know, formerly of White Snake Deal and, you know, Daisy's outside of a music uh, festival or a venue, like somewhere obscure. You remember? It happens periodically. I think the last time I was in a grocery store okay. and, um, you know, I was with my daughter, so it was kind of cool, you know. She, wow. yeah. And I actually, I you know, so yeah, somebody recognized me and said, oh man, really nice to meet you. I was like, ah, nice to meet you too. And she, she thought that was kind of cool but then all the time when i see people in the grocery store i always say hey i'm like hey how's it going you know or hey have you ever tried this stuff you know and i'll just and she thinks i know everybody so she's like are you friend, was that a friend of yours and i'm like no i was just asking if they like that that kind of milk you know or whatever and, but that's just that's just how i am but yeah that was that, it's period once in a while you know you, Someone will say that, or I'll, I'll go in a music store. Obviously, there's a better chance. Yeah. In there. Um, but, um, or, you know, sometimes it's a random thing. There was, a, uh, we were on tour in Seattle, and I was in a grocery store with the management, and um, a guy goes, Doug, what, what are you doing? What are you doing in Seattle? I go, well, we're playing tonight. You, you didn't know? He goes, no, where? And I'm like, so and so. He goes, oh, I'm going. I'm going. Cool. And I'm like, well, how did that happen that he didn't know that we were coming? So, the, and actually that gig, another guy recognized me on the street, same thing, didn't know we were playing. So I think maybe we, we dropped the ball on our promotion or something. I don't know what happened, but, um, but yeah, periodically it happens and it's, it's very sweet when people are, you know, they always are very kind and you know, it's cool. Awesome. So everybody just stay, uh, just obviously everybody's going to stay tuned till the end because um, in some sometime between uh, now and the end of this interview, um, I'm going to throw in a Doug Aldrich uh, guitar rip he did for me about a, two years ago when I lost the friggin' interview. Um, I'll put the interview, uh, I'll put the uh, story behind that in the links below. So um, coming up September, let him up. Um, is going to be released. Is there anything surprising on that album? Is there, like, I know um, you guys have done covers, CCR, The Who, and things like that. You put those on your albums. Is there anything surprising on the album that um, maybe a cover or two? Or? There's one cover that's a very, that's a very uh, obscure track, and probably people would hear it and go, that's just an original track. I had never even heard that track before. Um, David played it for me, but um, it turned out great. It's really cool, and we'll definitely be playing a bunch of the live stuff on tour at these shows, even though the album's not out yet. Mm -hmm. um, we will be playing three or four of the songs. We obviously, Light Em Up will be one. And um, there are some surprises on the album. There's two, there's two left turns that are very different for us. So we've never done that kind of thing, really. And um, it's awesome, because we've got half the record is, you know, that straight up kick-ass karate rock and roll just gonna say that yeah babies. yeah he's he sounds incredible on the album he did a great job and um marty frederickson produced really him and john together were spearheading the thing and um uh i was gonna say that 
one of the tracks that's very it's kind of a deep cut it's not going to be a single but it's it's a really important song for the album in my opinion i feel like it's kind of a cornerstone track that you take that track away and the album is half as good as it, as it, as it really is, as it is because it's just it's one of those that that takes picks you up and drops you off somewhere where you didn't expect to be and i love stuff like that we you know it's once in a while with white snake we had a track like that um that me and david wrote and this was one that we all wrote together we were actually in um in muscle shoals alabama doing some stuff down there and in this famous studio that's called fame recorders and in muscle shoals and we that's where we came up with the song and we held on to it for a little while and then finished it when we were in Nashville. Wow. Um, it, I'm just getting a, a kind of a vibe. Are you saying on the new album, there's, there's something that would resemble a ballad? Uh, well, there is a song that's very commercial. I don't know if I'd call it a ballad, but it's very commercial. It's a song that John brought in that is really great. It's it's a beautiful track, but it's it's got its heavy moments. It's kind of like mm -hmm. a, you know, it's kind of like a bad company ballad. It's not like, okay. it's not like a journey ballad. Right. Yeah. It's not like a journey ballad. Nothing wrong with that, but yeah, we're, we generally are more high, going more for the high octane stuff and there's tons of that but that's the third left field track that's the third one the other two i was talking about are um that one could be a single the one that john brought the other two are not gonna be singles but they're really cool right on um okay so i won't keep you much longer being gracious with your time everybody stick around like i said there's going to be a guitar look coming up um, I'm going to put the links below and uh, purchase all the merch because we know that David Lowy needs the money. <laughs> um, yeah, and everybody uh, just stick around and all that stuff. But um, what do you do on the road? He does need the money, actually, because he put a bunch of money in. He's got to get paid back. And we're working on that. Yeah, but and we do. Pay, we, we, we do pay him back. We, 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 we believe it or not, you know, we we generate a little bit more than what we spend at this moment in time and so we're slowly you know chipping away at the bill <laughs> well and that's the way things are these days right though so it's like um the merch is where the money comes from now it's um you're not making as you know, i mean releasing singles unless you have 500 million you know you're you're not seeing anything right like the old days with royalty checks yeah coming. i mean you know the, the merchandise is very important and um the live shows are where you make the sales most mm -hmm. of the sales for merchandise and and actually even um you know vinyl has become now again what is it it's, yes. it's more popular than cds now right again. yeah should be too yeah. so it's and it sounds better so it's a it's a good thing but yeah used to make a record used to go on a tour to, to support the record or yeah you would you would you would go on tour to try and sell the record now yeah. you make the record to try and sell the tour, and that's right. and and there, and you know I wouldn't be speaking to you, Ernest, if it wasn't for the the new songs. Mm -hmm. they, maybe maybe you promote the tour, but it it does help when you got a new uh, new piece of music, and and we're really happy to have Karabi back. We've got Tommy Clafetis on drums, Michael yep. Devin on bass, and um, Karabi is. And I'll, this is a good segue to the Ronnie thing because I was talking about him yesterday. It was one of um, Ronnie's dear buddies that runs a sound company that basically the company gives it's their, their company provides the sound system for all the biggest tours from Def Leppard Journey that's coming out this summer to Motley Crue, whatever, to Whitesnake. And he's been friends with Ronnie and David for years and he was there and we, I've known him for probably 20 years and um met him at ronnie's house and he was saying hey what's karabi like and i go he's great down to earth yeah. 
thing, thing is like a mother. And um, the thing that is comparable with Ronnie, you know, of course, they're different guys, different singers. But Ronnie would have loved John. Because John, yeah. John is, he's got a naturally really strong voice. And he will sing. I mean, it doesn't matter what the situation is. Do we, there was a couple times we would, it wasn't, it was in 2018 where we did a show in the day, like a festival in the day. And then we, we took a plane, took David's plane to another place and did a, sh- a festival at night. Mm-hmm. So two shows in one day with a travel, like two hours of travel in between. And like, you were, and you're talking about a, a ride from the hotel to the, to the, the airport then the airport ride to the first gig then then riding back to the airport flying again to the second gig and then driving a couple hours to the because the mm-hmm. festival is out out in the sticks it was way out yeah. i forget if it was in england or where it was it may have czech republic maybe i can't remember. I mean, it might have been czech republic but it was way out in the country so Krabi will he can do that a lot of guys can't do that they like mm-hmm. warm up sing and then they warm down and they, they, they that's it they want to be quiet for the rest of the day they don't want to talk Krabi's telling stories he's just got this voice you know that is I don't want to jinx him but it's 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 bulletproof yeah he's uh he's an amazing guy he's funny too he's uh I've spoken with him a few times uh, he's uh he's definitely um somebody that I think fits the mold for for the daisies um, I mean Glenn was great as well but um, so um, what was I going to ask you here? I don't know. I don't know. So what do you do when you're on the road um, for leisure? Like I know that, like you said, and a few things come up. Yeah, for sure. If you're doing 10 shows in like 15 days, obviously David can't fly because you said the regulations in some countries, you need 30 or 40 hours of sleep between uh, flights and all that stuff. But when you do um, have uh, two or three days off, what do you, what would you do that's um, a little bit obscure that maybe your fans uh, would think, well, that's pretty interesting. Like I know Randy Rose would uh, go take pictures of castles and buy little miniature trains, but. Yeah. And he would practice classical guitar. Yeah. He was doing that. It was an interesting side thing for Randy. Um, but I would, I would tend to say that, my my story is not as interesting as that. I'm basically a bit older, so I'll be going to the gym. I might want to. Um, obviously, I'm going to be playing guitar. I might be trying to do some writing or or something like that. I hmm. I take a, a little portable Pro Tool system on the road and like so because uh, you never know when you get an idea or there's something that you feel like you want to put down. You don't want to forget it. So I always do that. Um, like I said, going to the gym helps me keep my, my, you know, health together and keep my mind together too. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, we will go out and have a good meal and, and it's nice to see the town. You're, you know, when I was in White Sink, I would never really go out in the town. I would always just be in my room practicing and, and then we would have, you know, we'd have activities we had to do. But if we've got a couple of days off, I definitely like to go explore the town a little bit because these some of these little towns in Europe, especially, are so cool. There, mm-hmm. There's a lot of history in a place that you would never even think of, you know, um, a little, you know, someplace maybe in, in uh, Slovenia or, or something like that. Or obviously, like Poland's got a lot of history, but like a little town in Poland where, where you'd find this the oldest um the castle wall you know the, whatever something like and so there's always something like that that you can find but um a lot of times i'm i'm shopping for toys for my kid for my my one my son is older he's 14 so i don't really need to do that but i have a daughter that's that's eight now and she's still kind of when i come home she wants me to bring her stuff so <laughs> it's cool to go out in a town like <laughs> go yeah. out of town like that and find something like that you wouldn't find you know, in a regular you're a doll store. that says Karki on it. And what's, what's this? It's um, this Slovakian Barbie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, okay. I won't keep you much longer. i um, got to ask you one thing here. What's the opposite of unsubscribe? Subscribe, baby. Hit that button. Crush it. Smash the subscribe. Hit it. Don't forget. 
You don't want to miss it. And uh, favorite Canadian band or artist, even though most of my subscribers are American, uh, favorite Canadian band well, or artist. I'm going to throw this on you. I'll give you give you one choice what my Canadian band, favorite Canadian band is. Well, I've had you 180. Get this, I'll get this. I, I've had 180 interviews and I'll say 92% will say Rush. Is that your final answer? I'm thinking, um, I'm hoping it's something a little uh, more obscure. Triumph. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to disappoint you, sir. It is Rush. That's my favorite. Oh, yeah. How are you going to go wrong? Even from the get go with John Ruzzi on drums, it was off the chain. And it just got better and better when Neil, the professor, came on. And I love him. Of course, you got, you know, other bands. Um, Heaven is an obscure one. Um, Annihilator. Annihilator is a, is a, is a popular. Well, they're more. They're, that's a bigger band. Yeah. Um, Triumph was always in the mix in the in the early 80s, late seventies, early eighties. And um, uh, what's um, Atlantis more set was was really had was blew out blew up out of nowhere. Was Chili? No, not Chili Wack. That's not what I'm thinking of. Chilliwack, yeah, that was a band uh, out of Chilliwack, BC. There is a band, Chilliwack. Okay. I was mixing them up with somebody from uh, North Carolina. But anyway, yeah, Canada's got great. My buddy Phil X is from Canada, great yeah. guitar player. Um, Sass Jordan is an amazing singer from Canada. Jason Hook, a great guitar player. Uh, yeah, there's Canada's always brought a lot to the table. But, I mean... I was at the Rush R, I think it was R30, the concert. It was filmed in Frankfurt, Germany, and we, we were right. on tour with Whitesnake. And the tour manager got us tickets. And me and Reb and him and Marco went, Marco Mendoza. And right. Reb took off. He, after a couple of songs, Reb was like, I'm out of here, man. This is not my This is not my thing. And. He he had plans anyways. He had to he, he had to go, but I was just I was just loving it. And they were filming, and you could tell it was like the energy was there. And then after the show, we went back to say hi to the tour manager's buddy who got us in, right. and he put us in this room, this little room, and there was a road case, like a a, a wardrobe case there, and a refrigerator. And then all of a sudden, this other door opens, and here comes Alex and Getty walking in. They're like, "Hey, how's it going?" Me and Marco were just like, what? Yeah, hey, guys, what a, that was an amazing show. And well, it's, wow, it's really cool to meet you and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, they were just super down to earth. And I remember, I'll never forget, Getty goes, hey, would you like a Diet Coke or something? I'm like, actually, I would. I would like to have a Diet Coke with you. <laughs> oh, my God. So, that's Yeah. You know, you know how much of a great segue that, that really is? I'm going to be honest with you. I've got... Uh... Melissa K. Um, I don't want to pronounce her last name wrong, but she's a publicist out in um, uh, somewhere. I think in the 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 north west. I think um, I won't say where. Anyways, anyway, she's got me an interview with um, a band that's got an album coming out called Rush Recover. There, it's basically a tribute to Rush by Rush musicians and fans. I have that on Monday. That's so this awesome. Is a great segue. Yeah. It, that's going to be released. Yeah, I'm going to find out the release date. It's actually I was just trying to look at it, but I didn't want to not look at you when I was talking. But yeah, I'm interviewing uh, this uh, group of uh, a couple guys from this band that put together this album called Rush uh, Rush for Cover, and it's a tribute to Rush by musicians and, and Rush fans. So they're obviously fans and musicians. So that's on Monday. So by the Do time you know, this is, a... oh sorry, go ahead. No, go, you go ahead. It's okay. By the, you were going to say, by the time this is aired, it's good. you're going to have it. Well, I'll have this up uh, within 24 hours. But um, when you guys are watching this, some of my viewers, make sure you put the notification uh, bell on. So on Monday, uh, late Monday, you'll see that interview. But Got to get notified. You got to crush the notification button and smash that subscribe button. Right, Ernest? Yes, man. You're the best. All smash right. Smash it. All right, it's been such a pleasure, Doug. Um, this one I won't lose, okay? Um, right, but I'm going to put a little history Otherwise, below. call me back. We'll, we'll try and we'll do it verbatim. 
we yeah we won't lose this one i'll put this one up and uh, put all the links down below everybody check out the show daisies are on tour and get and just prep yourself put the notification uh bell on for um well you can probably pre-order the album which will be uh in september you can get the actual album called light them up yeah you can check everything on the dead daisies socials and stuff and that light them up song is out right now on spotify so check it yeah, out Yeah, actually on youtube as well it's got it's like a hundred thousand views in seven days it's been up the video is great kind of vintage i think i saw an old yeah. some microwave oven in there weird i still use one me too i mean i, I, I looked at it it looked like a gigantic um you know nuclear factory it was like the old style the ones yeah, are 50 it, pounds yeah, this one I got one that's that's kind of old school like that. That basically is is is, is head level. So I'm basically frying my brain every time I'm trying to yeah, heat yeah, up yeah. some mac and cheese or something. But you know, so far uh, it's okay. I hope. Yeah, man, you're <laughs> Anyways, still shredding. Thanks, thanks for having us, and and uh, enjoy your weekend, and um, look forward to seeing you. We're not coming to Canada at the moment, but we always love. We love it there, and we will be back. There'll be some ca Canadians at your Flint. Uh, I think you're doing Flint, Michigan. Um, there'll be Canadians at that show. I guarantee it. Cool. All right, Good. Take care, Doug. All right. Well, thanks, buddy. Good to good to talk to you as always.